Gonorrhea is a disease caused by bacteria. The bacteria will simply call the gonorrhea bacteria. Transmitted by sexual intercourse, it can also be transmitted from mother to the child during the childbirth process. This means that while the baby is still developing in a mother as a fetus, they will not be infected by gonorrhea. It is only when they are born, during that process, they are infected. Now, there are very, very uh, harmful effects. First, the person who is uh, infected with gonorrhea may become sterile. This means that they will be unable to have children in the future. For the babies who are infected by gonorrhea during childbirth, they may develop blindness. And that's it for gonorrhea. Now, for syphilis. Syphilis is also a bacterial disease transmitted through sexual intercourse. Now, this one can infect the unborn baby, the fetus. So during pregnancy itself, syphilis may be transmitted to the still developing fetus. So even before the fetus has been born, they will be infected by this disease. If that is the case, we have a special term for it. We call that congenital syphilis. In biology or in medical science, congenital syphilis here refers to syphilis that has been contracted while the baby is still developing in the mother's womb. In other words, this occurs before childbirth or during pregnancy. Sometimes you may come across the word congenital for a lot of other diseases. Now you know what it means. Congenital simply means it is a disease that was contracted before childbirth, during pregnancy. Okay, now syphilis is a bit more, syphilis is a bit more complex. There are a few stages to syphilis. First, the primary stage. During the primary stage, there is an appearance of small, round, painless sores called chancre. These are not going to be very uncomfortable per se, probably uncomfortable to look at, but not going to be very painful. However, that's only the primary stage. They will disappear whether you have treatment or not. So some people who get that, they may think, oh, it wasn't a problem, it went away. But then, the next stage. The secondary stage is where there is a rash on the palms and bottoms of the feet. This is resolved with or without treatment. Again, this one is something that may be seen, noticed, but because it can go away without, without treatment, some people may overlook it. Now we come to the latent stage. Now, during the latent stage, there will be no symptoms, but the infection remains in the body. And this is the stage where the patient can infect the sexual partner because there may be no outward symptoms to indicate there is anything wrong. Then we come to the last stage. This is where things get a little bit more dangerous. The tertiary stage develops if the latent stage is not treated. Bacteria will be able to damage any part of the body. Commonly, the heart, eyes, brain, nervous system, bones, liver, and joints. This is usually noted as symptoms down here. Insanity, paralysis, deformed joints, and even death. What about in children? It may damage the ears or hearing. The person may go deaf. It may cause abnormal teeth. Okay, these would be more likely to be due to congenital syphilis. Now, under our modern healthcare system, it is not likely syphilis will develop to the tertiary stage in most cases. In most cases, syphilis will be detected relatively early on and be treated. Now, because syphilis is a bacterial infection, because gonorrhea is also a bacterial infection, 
both of these can be treated with antibiotics. Antibiotics are drugs which are meant to treat bacterial infections. Now we come to one which is not a bacterial infection, AIDS caused by HIV. AIDS stands for Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome and it is the final stage of a HIV infection. HIV itself is what causes the disease. It stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus. This is a virus that can be transmitted through sexual intercourse, birth through an infected mother just like in gonorrhea, blood transfusion from an infected donor and that means sharing on, of contaminated needles and syringes may also allow infection to occur. Now a person contracting HIV may feel and look healthy in the early stages because the symptoms are not very noticeable. However, within 8 to 10 years, about half of HIV infected people develop full-blown AIDS. This is something which comes later on. So what does it do? As the name implies, this virus attacks the body's immune system. The immune system is responsible for protecting a person from all sorts of diseases. If the immune system is itself damaged, then the body will not be able to protect itself from all diseases. And when I say all diseases, it literally means all diseases that can ever happen. And that means the person is much more likely to develop cancer as well. So here are a few of the symptoms. The early symptoms is usually a chronic fever, a severe diarrhea lasting for months, loss of weight, loss of appetite. What about the diseases that are most commonly contracted by people who have a weakened immune system? If the immune system is weakened, you are susceptible to all the diseases that can never come your way. In particular, pneumonia becomes very common. Pneumonia is an infection of the lungs. There is also cancer. Kaposi sarcoma is a particular cancer of the blood vessels. Brain infections may also occur more easily. So these things normally would not occur in a relatively young, healthy person. These are diseases more associated with rare cases or elderly, very weak people. Okay, now HIV is a relatively scary disease or rather AIDS is a scary disease. HIV is the virus that causes it. How do we prevent these diseases? There are preventive measures we can utilize. General things that we can do is first be faithful to your spouse by having sexual intercourse with your spouse only. Having only one sexual partner in your life practically guarantees that neither will contract the STD from another person through any sexual activities. You can't have a sexual disease if you don't have sexual intercourse with another person with sexual disease. Now another way is to Avoid sharing any equipment that comes in contact with a person's blood or semen. Now, in the case of the blood, this is more for preventing HIV infection. But if it's semen, then that would refer to any sort of disease normally classified as an STD. This includes needles or ear piercing equipment. If needles or ear piercing equipment is used they should be sterilized. Okay, now lastly, let us mention this. Avoiding premarital sex or avoiding sexual intercourse before marriage is actually considered a way to prevent STDs because this will lessen your chance of having intercourse with a person who may have the disease. Remember that there are some diseases that do not show up. 
the symptoms may not be clear, the symptoms may not be clear or may not be noticeable. And finally, this point here. As I mentioned earlier, gonorrhea and syphilis are bacterial infections. They can be treated with antibiotics. HIV is not a bacterium. HIV is a virus. It cannot be treated with antibiotics. To date, we do not have any formal cure for AIDS. There is a cure for gonorrhea and syphilis, but there is no cure for AIDS, at least as of now. There is treatment for AIDS. There is treatment to slow down the progression of the HIV infection. But we have not yet found a real way to cure a HIV infection. Okay, that's it for STDs. <laughs>